Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today is March 7th, and uh, just buckle up. This is going to be a fun discussion this morning. Michael's still out on assignment in California. Uh, he's sending some pretty funny pictures. Biden scaled back powered rules, raises doubts over U.S. climate targets. <laughs> kind of some fun things going on there. BlackRock is at it again. BlackRock and Morgan Stanley buy TC Energy's Portland's pipeline business for $1.14 billion. In the words of Michael and I, what's a few billion between friends? Um, as the world hit, the world has been hit by internet outages. It's kind of an interesting little story. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I got hit. Uh, my LinkedIn went down. It turns out Twitter is the only one that hadn't been hit. I hope I don't just jinx Elon. So let's come around the corner one here. Secrecy around gas export terminals leave public in the dark on dangers. This is kind of frightening about having the regulatory uh, agencies having a little more mm, control or not having any open uh, openness on issues. Let's also talk about uh, the last story here is New Hampshire solar projects face widespread delays of trying to connect to the power grid. This is bringing up another gigantic problem that's going on is there's 20,000 projects trying to attach to the grid, but they can't because of regulatory holdups and permitting problems. So you need more power. You got to fix the regulatory issues first. So with that, let's go ahead and get started on these stories and get rolling around. Um, Biden's scale back power rule raises doubts over the U.S. climate targets. I'll tell you, uh, this is kind of interesting when we sit back and say uh, the Biden administration to exclude the existing U.S. fleet of natural gas plants from the carbon emissions regula regulations uh, definitely raises questions over the nation's ability to meet its own climate goals. This is where I'm going to uh, go a little bit uh, disagree with this story, and then I'll agree with it here in just a little bit. The EPA says it has plans to write separate rules to cover the CO2 emissions from existing gas, uh, gas plants, as well as other hazardous air pollution uh, issues. The Trump administration uh, displayed enormous hostility to environmental protections for American communities when they were power, says Trevor Higgins, senior vice president for energy and environment at the left wing uh, think tank Center for American Progress. They intend to roll back and halt climate policy across the board. This is farther than the tr farther they need to understand physics regulatory actions and the impact it has on consumers and voters um let's take a look at this right down in here uh the epa's proposal upset the u.s power industry right from the get-go <laughs> the ypa uh, the white house and the epa declined to comment for the last minute change of excluding the natural gas plants from the new regulations coming out Natural gas is 40% of our electricity in the United States. We're in an election year. They're trying to shut down every coal plant they can. The EIA over the last uh, two years ago said the only reason that the United States reduced its uh, carbon output by 22% was due to natural gas. China, on the other hand, has increased theirs by 220%. So, um, and they are increasing on coal. So we're going to eliminate the two most important pieces of our grid, and that is the natural gas and coal combination. Watch it coming around the corner here. So you're going to see this, and it's going to get pretty funny. Um so, and as we get rolling into this, let's go to the next story. 
BlackRock and Morgan, ITC Energy's Portland uh, pipeline business for $1.14 billion. Here's where it gets really kind of interesting. Let me give you some stats on this real quick. BlackRock and Morgan Stanley agree to buy TC Energy's Portland natural gas transmission system. It's worth $1.14 billion. The move comes not long after uh, BlackRock agreed to buy Global Infrastructure Partners for $12.5 billion in January. Let's take a look at this. Uh, the deal is between the existing infrastructure services provider and its partner, uh, Energier LP, and Black, BlackRock's diversified infrastructure business investment fund managed by Morgan Stanley. It includes $250 million in debt. Pipelines are always a fantastic uh, long-term uh, investment. The PNGTS uh, operates 295 miles of gas pipelines, uh, also serving in Upper New England and the Atlantic provinces of Canada. Here's where I think people need to understand. BlackRock has now ditched ESG, uh, they have ditched ESG investing, but and then they still want to hold to their course of saying that we should abandon fossil fuels, but then they go buy natural gas pipelines. So follow the money, question everything. Um, and just as a uh, teaser, I'm interviewing Paul Tice next week. He has a brand new book out. And it is called The Race to Zero, How ESG Investing Will Crater the Global Financial System. So I'm quite excited to read this and uh, interview Paul next week on that. So let's go to the next story here. World hit by internet outages. Um, I don't know about you, but... Um, David Blackman, Ray Trevino, and I talked about the uh, uh, Charles Schwab up there when he was saying, hey, we are going to you are going to see an Internet failure around the world like you wouldn't believe. Well, we just had AT&T cell phone come down. We just had uh, yesterday was uh, uh, I'm filming this on Wednesday. But on Super Tuesday, uh, we had the, uh, I believe it was Twitter, uh, no, Twitter stayed up, uh, 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 Facebook and several others uh, all went down. Today, when I'm filming this on Wednesday, uh, LinkedIn went down. So when you sit back and take a look, this article really is just displaying uh, there are some big things happening on right now in the world of security. The Yemen based uh, Houthis, and as Michael and I say, Houthis and the blowfish um, uh, militants. Uh, could have cut the underwater cables in the Red Sea, uh, they've claimed. Um, in a post on X, Meta spokesperson Andy Stone said the company was aware people are having trouble accessing our services. In a subsequent mention, he uh, puts the disruptions down to a technical issue. I love that technical issue. And leave it to Elon when he jumped out there and, and said, hey, X is still up. I loved it because he jumped out again today and said, hey, X is still up and uh, even linked, uh, LinkedIn got hit. Now, the uh, according to the company's uh, estimates, 25% of its internet HGC communications was hit. Uh, it had a contingency plan uh, through mainland China and the U.S. This was out of the cable that was cut. Um, and there are other telecom uh, folks that are also having problems. This goes back also to several other conversations that we've had is that there are things going on geopolitically around the world that have been emboldened because nothing was done even after the Nord Stream uh, pipelines were uh, sabotaged. There are other sabotages going on. We are in a area where you need to 
double check everything, keep your head on a swivel, back up all your data and um, just be careful out there. Things are getting weird and they're getting, it's election year. <laughs> Secret, uh, here's the next one. Um, secrecy around gas export terminals leaves public in the dark on dangers. Uh, this one is really pretty um, scary when you sit back 18 months after the plant, uh, after the Freeport LNG explosion, what caused the explosion or where did it, what was going to happen again? They haven't heard anything. And I think that that is a very big uh, item. And then we see the uh, uh, Biden administration uh, not permitting any more LNG and putting the ban in the LNG area. They need to be able to not put uh, uh, harsh uh, restrictions without following up on actually communication with the public. We have a right to know. Uh, if people knew the risks around LNG, there would be uh, so much public outcry that this build out wouldn't happen, said Naomi Yoder, who researched the safety of LNG facilities as staff scientist at the environmental watchdog Healthy Gulf. This one kind of irritates me a little bit in the fact that let's check and see who's paying her salary. It's either going to be Bloomberg or it's going to be Soros. Um I don't want to be a conspiracy theory, but you have to look at who prints the money on these things in order for these reports to come back through. So the bottom line is uh, we need to know what happened on that report. We also need to be able to trade with our global partners around the world without repercussions. Right now, our great LNG um, exports can help deliver promised goods. President Biden, if you're awake or if you're listening, you promised to deliver all the LNG that you could to our uh, partners and our allies. And now you're back walking that. So uh, anyway, with that, let's go ahead and go to the next one. That was a very interesting article. Let's go to the next story here. New Hampshire solar projects face widespread delays connecting to the power grid. I found this pretty interesting. And when you sit back and take a look, even though this is out of just one state, it is another in this energy thread that we're talking about today. And that is part of the regulatory issues coming on. Wire belt solar panels are uh, 2,400 solar panel array installed on the roof was for a conveyor belt manufacturer wire belt. Um, they just wanted to make sure that the people who, this is a quote, uh, took advantage of the solar, have opportunity to utilize the good clean power and hopefully at a lower price. Right now, there are no guardrails, no timelines, no real obligations to hurry, said Sam Evans Brown, executive director for the nonprofit Clean Energy News Hampshire. This is where you're a regulated monopoly. Regulators are supposed to step in. Um, we need answers as the public trying to be able to say, guys, we are in election year. We need answers. We need low cost energy. And we need to be able to have accountability. So uh, with that, take the survey on survey.energynewsbeat.com. Let us know what your thoughts are. We have some fantastic new products rolling out. Uh, sign up early and uh, not like the joke that's going on, sign up early and sign up often and, and then sign up your dead relatives. But uh, since this is an election year, that is a joke. So uh, with that, reach out, hug somebody, love somebody, and tell uh, everybody uh, about the show. We appreciate all of our great listeners and uh, all of the great feedback. If you are an energy expert, please uh, reach out. I want to talk to you on the podcast. I have a, a wild lineup uh, getting ready to rumble out again. Uh, thank you to everybody that's listening to the show. We really appreciate you. Uh, Till then, we'll see you next week.